King of Fires, Metal Slug, Fatal Fury, Samurai Showdown. These are the iconic names you'll hear time and again when discussing SNK Online. However, what seldom gets the spotlight is SNK's pretty big catalogue of obscure titles, one of which will be the subject of the next instalment in this video series. Welcome to What the F*** is Psycho Soldier? <laughs> SNK was way ahead of the curve in the early 90s, like, Jesus, think about it. Not only were they creating multiple series that had connected continuity in Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting, but they were also looking to create a new fighting game series that crossed over its most iconic properties. Look how successful that idea has become in more recent years. It's mind-boggling that SNK wanted to do it back in the early 90s. So with Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting being the hot new brand spanking IPs under their belt, characters from those were given for filling up the roster. Like honestly, Fatal Fury is to KOF what Fire Emblem is to Smash, except most people don't mind because Fatal Fury is fucking awesome. Uh, anyway, SNK had quite a large back catalogue even before they started making fighting games, and while some of the games were pretty cool, there was decidedly a lack of engaging characters in them. Fewer still had characters that would look relatively normal brushing shoulders with the likes of Terry Bogard and Ryo Sakazaki. I mean, at best you had stuff like the generic Rambo dudes from Makari Warriors, and there's no way you could redesign them into interesting and iconic characters. However, there was one character that actually had a bit of a cult following, and SNK had received lots of requests for it to return at some point, with KOF 94 being the perfect opportunity to do so. That character, of course, was Athena Asamiya from Psycho Soldier. Or is it pronounced Athena? Athena Asamiya. Well, I'm just gonna keep saying Athena. So with a redesign to look more like an idol, or a Chinese martial artist, I mean, what exactly is this supposed to be? Because apparently she didn't actually become an idol until halfway through the Hiroshi saga, but whatever. She was added to a team alongside her old co-star, Oh, Jesus, I've never had to pronounce Kensou's actual name. Is it she Kensou or just Sai or just Kensou? That would be fine. Who who cares? With an original character, Chin Jensai, to act as their master, forming Team Psycho Soldier. But what exactly is Psycho Soldier? Well, it's a platforming shoot 'em up hybrid side scroller arcade game. The basic story is as follows. An ancient alien race has been mucking around in the Earth's crust for hundreds of thousands of years, and in modern day Japan, modern day as in the late 80s, they're finally coming back up to invade the human race and start wreaking havoc on the city. The military are pretty much no match for them, and all hope seems lost until Athena shows up. SNK continues being trailblazers as the game sets up an extremely innovative gameplay mechanic wherein the player can choose their own morality path. You can either choose to side with the aliens and assist in taking over the city, or choose to help Kensel fight them off and rescue civilians. Actually, that was complete bullshit. I just got reminded about Shadow the Hedgehog while summarising the story and didn't take my anti-Sonic fan meds this morning. Unfortunately, Athena is a bit of a stereotypical ditzy anime girl, so she wakes up super late and shows up to the city central with a piece of toast and egg in her mouth just to see some aliens lung-fucking a mangled corpse. Like, the first level isn't so much defending the city as it is cleaning up what's left of it. But it's okay, because Athena feels bad and she says go menacei with a big cartoon sweat drop next to her head, so everything is fine now. The levels are split into four floors which you can freely jump between. They're all laden with destructible debris that house items that can power up Athena, although they can also be traps so you've got to be careful. Your main method of attack is your energy beam, but as you progress you'll be able to obtain Psycho Ball projectiles. Yes, those Psycho Balls. They grant you a few frames of invincibility and split up and down the screen when they hit something, killing any enemy they come into contact with. They can be upgraded over time as well, but I didn't really get to experience having filled up balls because, not to put too fine a point on it, this game is pretty fucking hard, and also because I'd masturbate seven times a day. As far as I'm aware, you die in one hit and get about three lives before you have to butter the cabinet up with another quarter. But other than the difficulty, it's a pretty simple affair, just mow down all the enemies in your path, destroy the debris to nab upgrades. Something else that's interesting is every now and then a big green egg will spawn, and if your energy meter is high enough, you can crack it and transform Athena into a giant fiery phoenix. So that's cool. You may wonder why she never does this in King of Fighters, and funnily enough, there's actually a lore-based reason why, but we'll get to that. It's not really the gameplay that makes Psycho Soldier stand out for me. It's just the things you see as you progress further are just 
certifiably batshit. We need to move deeper into the earth to find the source of all the aliens, so the level themes actually get pretty imaginative. From the broken down city to the sewers below it, an active volcano, the underwater city of Atlantis for some reason, to even the rancid asshole of a giant alien. I mean, I don't want to insinuate that Athena has been vored by an alien, but I don't really know what else she could possibly make at the final stage. The bosses are surprisingly inventive as well, and honestly I got reminded by Castlevania with some of their designs, which is nothing but a compliment. Psycho Soldier's main accolade that often gets brought up is that it holds the title of having the first vocal theme song in a video game. So that's pretty prestigious. Even more impressive is that it still sounds decently listenable all these years later rather than sound like a bunch of cats getting steamrolled. <laughs> The English dub of the song is pretty shitty though. The singer is basically just reading the words with some tiny modicum of rhythm. These dubbed lyrics would get justice in later versions of the song though, so it's not a huge deal. Athena's English voice in general just doesn't sound like she could give even half a fuck. Like the localizer team just poked their heads out the office window and offered 20 to some random stoned Latina that just happened to be walking by. Athena, I will go. Let me change. Speaking of the localization, there's also bad box art Athena. Yeah, this was before anime had culturally poisoned the Western world, so there was no shot this gay shit was selling. How the times have changed, although apparently her face is still too moe. Overall, Psycho Soldier's not exactly something I can recommend you to play, unless you're some diehard SNK fan and are like, super interested in their history. It's pretty dead simple and isn't exactly something I'd call fun, but I do see a lot of potential in its premise, designs and characters, and of course its introduction of two of one of SNK's most iconic characters can't be ignored. But if you're on your deathbed and suddenly remember that you've never played Psycho Soldier, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I won't be covering them in this video, but I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the other two Athena games created by SNK. The first came before even Psycho Soldier, that being Athena's Wonderland, where you play as the original goddess Athena, who Asamiya is a direct descendant of. I was originally going to play both for this video, but looking at some gameplay of it, I think it speaks for itself and looks a bit too primitive. If you really want me to take a look at this sometime, throw me a comment and maybe I'll give it a shake. The other game is Athena Awakening from the Ordinary Life, which is a PlayStation 3D RPG adventure game, which I guess is the best way to put it. And as a big Resident Evil fan, when I first saw this game in action, I was immediately intrigued considering it looks pretty much like an old Resi game, but with Athena Asamiya. The issue is, and say it with me now, Japan exclusive. This game never made it overseas and as far as I know there's no translation for it. I've heard it's kind of shitty anyway and the game itself is non-canon taking place in like 2018 or something, in an alternate timeline no less so I guess it's no huge loss, but it's still a shame I can't exactly play it. I would like to cover it one day, but not now. If you're super interested, Guy or Winquote has a pretty extensive video looking at the game on his channel. So how does Psycho Soldier connect to KOF? Is it like Fatal Fury and AOF where the characters join KOF after the events of their games have already happened? Well, it's actually the other way around. In KOF, Athena and Kenso are actually training for the events of Psycho Soldier to happen. That explains why Athena doesn't turn into a phoenix in KOF like she can in Psycho Soldier. And remember that whole abandoned dragon spirit plotline Kenzo had going for him in the Nests and Ash Saga? Well, in Psycho Soldier, it seems like he's already mastered the ability since when he breaks the egg, he can turn into a fucking dragon. Oh yeah, you can play as Kenzo in Player 2 mode. Hooray. That's like a level below Luigi. That's even worse than playing as Tails in Psych 2. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about SNK's recent talk about how they basically want to make the games industry their bitch and make a shit ton of high budget games outside their fighter game work. Well, this is something I want to discuss more extensively later, I feel like I should mention that I definitely see a lot of potential in Psycho Soldier when it comes to reviving dormant IPs. I mean, just look at this Nona art that depicts what a more gritty and high budget Psycho Soldier game could end up looking like. It looks fucking awesome. And people are always screaming at SNK to make another sprite based game. With its levels that all kind of connect to each other and different upgrades and power-ups and such, I feel like Psycho Soldier could naturally lend itself to a Metroidvania style reboot. That'd be sick. But honestly, you could do a lot of things with this IP. Maybe have another go at an RPG or survival horror type deal. I'd certainly be down to see the series return and use the old games as a base to build something really cool. I think the juxtaposition between a teenage high school pop idol girl and a fucked up alien invasion could make the game really striking and funny as well. That's all I really gotta say about Psycho Soldier though, it's not the longest video like the World Heroes one, but come on, it's an 
fucking 1987 arcade game. There's only so much I can say before I just start reading shit off wiki pages. If anything, I'm surprised this video's actually gone on as long as it has. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I checked it out, and I get the feeling that KOF isn't the last we'll see of Athena Acid Nia. What the fuck? I have full energy. Fuck this game. Fuck it, I'll find footage on YouTube. Fucking piece of shit.